Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So very short and very simple video, and that is uh, to talk very briefly about terminology related to um, old black powder, in this case muzzle loading, firearms. And very simply, a lot of you will have heard of the expression lock, stock and barrel. And hopefully, probably I'm guessing 95% of my subscribers and viewers on this will have heard that expression and will know exactly where it comes from. But where it comes from is this type of old firearm. So what we have here is a percussion lock um, pistol, single shot, so the powder goes in first, powder down there, um, usually a, a card or a wad of some kind, then a ball, then sometimes a, a card or something to keep the ball from rolling out and falling out. Um, the little rammer is used to ram all of those things down. And then, quite simply, this is a percussion lock rather than a flint lock. Uh, flint locks obviously use a flint, I'll talk about those in a future video, but with a percussion lock, quite simply a uh, a, ni a, a percussion cap goes on what's called the nipple here. Yes, that is highly amusing. Um, so the nipple there, and it has a hole which goes down into the um, back, the breech of the of the barrel where the powder is sitting, and the. A uh, percussion cap goes on top there, and quite simply when they pull the trigger, the hammer comes down, makes the cap go bang, just like sort of caps that you play with as a kid. The sparks, essentially the fire, goes down into the hull, ignites the powder, boom, the ball flies out at the end. As you can imagine, these are relatively slow to reload, although not as slow as some people might think, uh, but it's quite fiddly, and if you're in a combat situation and you're fumbling around with um, powder and ball and things like this, then obviously it might not be practical to reload. Very often in, for example, in the uh, Napoleonic Wars, right the way up to the Crimean War when this sort of pistol was used, um, this is more kind of, this is probably sort of 1830s, 1840s, 1850s time, when these were used, um, quite often you would have one or two of these, and once you had fired them, um, usually in self-defense, these would be kept for, so last ditch self-defense, rather than kind of as a weapon of attack, because that's what your, this is an officer's pistol or a, or a self-defense pistol, um, so you're, essentially the men with uh, muskets would be doing, would be doing most of the fighting, but used in a self-defense situation, this would be shot, fired, uh, and then if you have another one, that would be shot and fired, and uh, then you would usually um, discard them or stick them in your belt and pull out a bowie knife or a saber or cutlass or whatever you have as a hand-to-hand -hand weapon. And that, of course, is why hand-to-hand -hand combat with bayonets and swords and cutlasses and knives, bowie knives, sword sticks, all of these things, that's why it did occur quite a lot still, right the way up until really repeating pistols, revolvers and such like, pepper pot pistols, um, came along in the middle of the 19th century. Because up until that point, you really only had one or sometimes you had two shot pistols, sometimes you had a brace or pair of pistols. Um, and once those were expended, then you had to rely on your hand weapons. So clearly hand weapons were still very important at that point. Once revolvers came along, it did start to change the balance. Although, of course, as I've spoken about in previous videos, even with a revolver, like this whopping great Adams um, I've got here, 1851 pattern, um, even with those, you've got um, uh, four, five, or six shots in them, and they might not all hit, and there might be more opponents than that. So even with those, hand weapons are still important. But especially in the era, era of muzzle-loading single-shot um, pistols, highly important in a self-defense situation uh, to have some kind of backup hand weapon. Now these can be used as hand weapons to some degree. Yes, you could use it as a little cosh, as a little club, but really if you come up against someone with a spear or a sword or cutlass and you've just got that, <laughs> you're probably a bit screwed. Now to come back to my original point about lock, stock and barrel. So that expression comes from the period when firearms were made in this way out of essentially three parts. We have the barrel, the lock, that is this mechanism that has the hammer attached to it, which inside just has a, a what's called a mainspring, which connects to the trigger, and the trigger releases the mainspring, and then the stock. So we have lock, stock, and barrel, which means the complete thing. And so that's all it means. When someone says lock, stock, and barrel, so the famous film Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, it's referring to double barrel shotgun, of course, it means the entire thing, okay? Because you've got uh, your lock, your stock, and your barrel. There we go, folks. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.